After countless twists and turns, false leads, and dead ends, the case remains frustratingly unsolved. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 unsolved crimes that can't be explained. Empty frames still hanging in Boston. A mystery that has so many mysteries within it. For this list, we're looking at the most infamous unsolved crimes that are shrouded in mystery. Do you have answers to any of these crimes? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10, The Summerton Man. So much is unknown about The Summerton Man. What we do know is that a man was found dead on an Australian beach on December 1st, 1948. We do know quite a bit about his last day of life. On the 30th of November, 1948, he came here to the Adelaide railway station. We know that he was found with a torn piece of paper bearing the words Tamam Shud, which is Persian for it is finished. We know that something that could be a code was written in the book from which the paper was ripped. But we don't know the significance of Tamam Shud, and we don't know what the code means, if it is a code at all. The mystery has generated considerable attention, and some, including the pathologist that examined his body, suspect that the man was poisoned. In July 2022, DNA seemingly proved that the mystery man was an electrical engineer named Carl Webb. We managed to extract enough DNA from one of the summit man's hairs. Uh, and from that DNA, we were able to then find a distant cousin that is still alive. Unfortunately, many unsolved questions still remain and investigations continue. Number nine, the Jameson family deaths. Bobby and Sherilyn Jameson, along with their daughter Madison, disappeared in October of 2009. Their pickup truck was found containing many belongings, including phones, wallets, and even their still-living dog. Hunters on four-wheelers find a locked truck parked on a dirt road near the top of Panola Mountain. They peeked in the window and they saw a dog, and the dog was not doing so well. It had been locked in that truck for multiple days. Perhaps most intriguing was the $32,000 in cash found inside the vehicle. By scouring home surveillance footage, investigators saw the Jamesons loading their truck in what's been described as a trance-like state. And Cheryl and Jameson can be seen putting a briefcase inside the truck. They never acknowledged each other as they were walking back and forth from the vehicle. This briefcase was not recovered at the site. The remains of the Jameson family were only found four years later, confirming that they had died near their abandoned vehicle. Some theories have been put forth, but many aspects of this case remain unknown, including the cause of death. If the Jamesons were involved with drugs, in Latimer County, that usually means one thing. We automatically assume here in southeastern Oklahoma, if you're on a drug, that it's methamphetamine. Number eight, the Hinterkaifeck attacks a tantalizing cold case. The hinter murders are full of spooky details. Before the killings, the inhabitants of the farmhouse in Germany allegedly heard footsteps in the attic, found newspapers on the property, and even saw footprints leading to a smashed lock. However, all of these incidents were dismissed by 63-year-old Andreas Gruber. In the late evening of March 31, 1922, Four of the house's inhabitants, including Gruber, were lured to the barn and killed by an unknown assailant, or perhaps multiple assailants. The perpetrator then made their way into the house proper and killed two others, leaving a body count of six. They then lived with the bodies for three days before fleeing, leading to decades worth of bewildered investigators. Number seven, the Gardner Museum heist. This real life art heist would put any movie to shame. It occurred on March 18, 1990, when two men pretending to be cops were let into Boston's Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum. They handcuffed them and they wrapped duct tape around their eyes and they uh, locked them up in the basement. 13 works were lifted, reportedly valued at hundreds of millions of dollars. Swiped from the museum was Rembrandt's The Storm on the Sea of Galilee, Manet's Shea Tortoni, and most notably, Vermeer's The Concert, which alone is worth $250 million. The most valuable thing ever stolen in the history of the world is the Vermeer, The Concert. The second most is the Storm and Sea of Galilee. The thieves left behind virtually no clues or pieces of evidence, and the case remains unsolved. Furthermore, none of the 13 works of art has ever been recovered. Their places in the museum are still honored by empty frames. We don't know. It's just a really difficult thing to explain, and um, we can't explain it away. 
Number six, Jeanette De Palma. This 16-year-old from New Jersey left her home on August 7, 1972 to visit a friend, but she never arrived. Her remains were found six weeks later, and the state of them has aroused suspicion for decades. Found on a clifftop, her body was surrounded by weird objects that some have linked to the occult. The body was surrounded by uh, crosses and there was a halo of stones placed around the head. So the, the newspapers got a hold of this and um, they, they started saying that uh, it was Satan worshipers or witchcraft. For example, branches surrounded De Palma in the shape of a coffin and various wooden crosses had been placed inside this makeshift funerary space. Perhaps even more curious is the fact that her autopsy proved inconclusive, finding no direct cause of death. There was no cause of death ever, ever determined because the body was so badly decomposed. That said, a high amount of lead was found in the body. Unfortunately, the case eventually went cold owing to a lack of leads. Number five, the Atlas Vampire. The story of the Atlas Vampire dates back to May 1932 when a deceased woman was found inside her Stockholm apartment. 32-year-old Lily Lindestrom was discovered a few days after she had been killed, and some aspects of the crime scene immediately became notable. Lindestrom had been sexually assaulted, and her entire body had seemingly been emptied of blood. Detectives also found a gravy ladle near the body. Investigators put two and two together and surmised that the killer had potentially drunk Lindestrom's blood with the ladle. Various artifacts recovered from the scene are now housed at Stockholm's police museum, serving as an eerie reminder of the case that was never solved. Number four, Artemis Ogletree, also known as the Room 1046 mystery. The killing of Artemis Ogletree has baffled investigators and internet sleuths alike. It occurred on January 5th, 1935. For a couple of days prior, Ogletree, going by the name of Roland T. Owen, was behaving strangely. He often sat in the dark, seemed agitated, and was corresponding with a man named Don. At 10.30 a.m. on the morning of January 5th, Ogletree was found bound and bloodied in his hotel president room and later died at the hospital. Following his death, Ogletree's mother received letters from someone pretending to be her son. His assailant may have been a man named Joseph Martin, who went by the alias Donald Kelso, but this has never been confirmed. Number three, the Eastall woman. A family was hiking near the city of Bergen, Norway on November 29, 1970, when they came across a burned body. All identifying information had been removed from both the crime scene and the belongings that investigators found at a nearby train station. We know that she did stand out in, in Norway. She was dark-haired, tanned, looked South European, but from her behavior, we know less. An autopsy proved that the woman had overdosed on sleeping pills, had suffered carbon monoxide poisoning, and was initially alive when she was burned. Further investigation proved that she was traveling around Europe with wigs and numerous fake passports. From what we know about the Easter woman, it is highly likely that she spent time in Italy. A bag from a shoe shop in Rome was found in her belongings. Multiple theories have emerged, like the fact that the Eastall woman was a Cold War spy, that she took her own life, and that she was killed. There was a theory put forward by the police in Norway that the Istal woman may have been part of a criminal gang making counterfeit checks. Unfortunately, we may never know the answers to this myriad of questions. Number two, JonBenet Ramsey. The fate of child beauty queen JonBenet Ramsey was one of the biggest news stories of the 90s. A story that is gripping the nation. It is the investigation of the murder of little JonBenet Ramsey. Her body was found in the basement of the family's Colorado home on December 26, 1996. A ransom note was also found in the house demanding $118,000 for her return. Suspicion immediately fell on the family. Detectives instantly assumed one or both of John Bonet's parents had killed the little girl. Experts believed that the ransom note was written by Ramsey's mother, Patsy. Both parents refused to answer the police's questions, and they allegedly attempted to obstruct an investigation of murder in court. Later DNA tests supposedly cleared the family of all suspicion, but some have rejected this exoneration. The case remains open to this day. We want to do whatever can be done technically and resource-wise to find the killer of our daughter. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Disappearance of the Sodders A devastating fire struck the Sodder household on Christmas Eve of 1945. The parents, George and Jenny Sodder, escaped with four of the nine children who were living there at the time. The other five were never seen again. It's unclear if remains were found. One account states that they were found, but that the parents were not notified to spare them further grief. Others claim that the site harbored no human remains, whether by suspicious activity, a faulty search effort, or because they were incinerated in the fire. In 1967, 22 years after the fire, Jenny Sauter was sent a photo of an adult male she went on to believe to be her missing son, Louis. Some suspect a simple house fire, while others believe that the Sicilian Mafia was involved, as George Sauter had made disparaging remarks about Benito Mussolini. 